Um, there's a handful of other applications. We work really closely with smart technologies. They do the smart boards. Well, they also have a set of uh, classroom uh, classroom software tools called their Classroom Suite. Um, it's their notebook, um, their sync, and their response. And it's all about classroom collaboration. So a teacher's at the, at the front of the room. She's teaching. The students are learning auditorily, right? Well, she can also stream content down. She can stream, whoops, sorry. She can stream content down, and so now the kids see the visuals, the interactive visuals. They could also be working with some, you know, science probes or uh, a Lego robotics set or something that's connected to it so they get the tactile mode. And this is all controlled to the teacher. The teacher has the ability to stop them and tell them eyes up front, to be able to monitor what they're doing to make sure they're on task and not off surfing the web for the latest Hannah Montana background wallpapers or whatever. Um, they can actually go and, and make sure they're on task. Um, in addition, she can do quizzes. Um, I do some teaching on the side at night. One of the most frustrating things is you look at the students and go, did y'all get that? And everybody goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then they don't really get it. Right. So she can do a quick quick quiz question. And it comes back, 60% didn't get it. OK, now she knows, real-time assessment. Right. Um, they can do their tests and their homework. And all those elements, all through those tools. Um, in addition, we've got another tool by uh, a company called EasyBits called Inspiris Desktop which is a, another tool that allows you to focus. So let's say you're in a math class and the teacher wants them to focus and only provide them the tools that they need for that particular lesson so that they're not tempted to go surf the web or to do other things. You give them the math tools, you give them um, you know, their, their textbooks and a couple other things and that's all they have access to when they're in that mode. And then she comes out of the lesson and it opens it up for them to do other things. Mm -hmm. We've got tools in here for um, the ability to um, uh, uh, we call it access management, so what websites they can and can't go to, what programs they can and can't access, and you can have a school mode and a home mode, so that if they take them home, at home you might have different access restrictions that your parents want, certain times of day that you can't access the device, those types of things. Um, there's some computer management stuff, so I'm in a school, I've talked about total cost of ownership. How do I make sure these things have the right images on it, or there's a new virus update and they need to get updated? So there's some really easy to use tools for administrators to go down the wire updates, to do um, you know, backup and restore of images, um, those types of things. So computer, basic computer management um, elements. Um, there's also a theft deterrent program. You have to hook it up to a school server, but if you've got that option, it's actually the hardware option that if this gets stolen, and you can either do it by number of boots or by a time certificate, if it doesn't get a renewed certificate in that time period that you give it, it does what it's called bricking itself. And it does it at a hardware level, not a software level. So you can't like flip out the SD drive or flip out the hard drive and it works again. It actually makes this thing unusable. So you know, you're getting there, it works, and then all of a sudden the next day you boot it up and you're like, well, what's going on? It doesn't work anymore. And you go, you got to take it back to school to get it re-enabled. So it becomes useless to a thief. If somebody takes